Um, so, how are you? Having a good time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> great, great. Um, <laughs> might as well start out. I, uh, I often get going talking too fast. As my wife says, I'm the only person who can put a whole sentence into a single syllable. Um, so, if I'm going too fast or I'm mumbling, just stop me. I appreciate it. Or talking too softly, I can talk too softly also. Sometimes I don't say anything, so that's not uh, Okay, let's start with. Um, I'm going to start you out with. We have problems with these chalks, and these chalks don't show, we can experiment with it. But let's just start talking about. I want you to uh, just call out. Um, Nonviolence campaigns, nonviolence actions, nonviolence things, things in history we've gotten through nonviolence or, or working on. Be louder. <laughs> Did I hear someone start to speak? Anti-war protests. Anti-war protests. <laughs> Women's suffrage. Women's suffrage. Slavery. What's that? Slavery. 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 Yeah, I got that. Emancipation. Mm -hmm. End of slavery. Abolitionist. No, Jesus or abolition. Yeah. E M. Yeah. Are you talking about the United States or anywhere? Uh, no, we have oh. slavery here. Huh? No, but he wants to know if he can add to it. Oh. Oh. Well, well, India. India. India, 1933 Indian Independence. The salt. Tell me it's true. The salt more. Did I hear that? Yes. Yeah, but India was 1947. But what the movement I think was started during the Second World War. Okay, so we'll check that out. Things involved in anti anti violence. Gay rights. Gay rights. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the truth and reconciliation in South Africa. Declaration of Independence. I should be saying, everybody don't know what you mean by the divest divestment movement? Amplify on, I should give people to amplify on these things. Well, I know what's going on right now against what Israel is doing with the settlements. We're talking about uh, us. <coughs> you got a big piece of chocolate. Yeah, got it. Big piece of chocolate. Well, it's involved now. It's a movement here to. Uh, okay, so. Um, the divestment of Israel, the divestment of, 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 uh, of uh, apartheid. Uh, apartheid. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, of course, not in most history books. It's it's um, the late, there was a huge shutdown in the city of Seattle of, by the labor unions, and uh, I only found out about it because of um, the people's history of the United States. That's right. That's right. Right to form unions too. Um, Quakerism. How about prisoners' rights? Prisoners' rights? The name of the name. I mean, uh, okay, people who yeah, people have, list um, have rights. Declaration we could put the Bill of Rights in here too. Okay. <coughs> yeah, good, good, good list of rights. So, all things which we the people 
took. And in every single case, emancipation. The power holders lost power, lost money when, when the slaves were emancipated. Uh, women's suffrage. When women got the right to vote, the power holders lost, lost money, lost rights. We forced them to do it. We the people. Um, and so that's, um, and, and I would say, I would venture to say that everything we cherish and hold, hold important came because people got up and demanded what was right. Demanded and took it. So that's an important thing. And that comes down to this whole question of power. Is this cool? I like these wheels. So, oh, I still have it here. You know, all, all those power pyramid idea? So, like the, pre like the president's up here, uh, and the people, and the people are down here, and all power flows down from the president to the people, you know, the Congress. You know, you know. It's a myth. It's absolutely a myth. Whenever I look at this, I think of remember in Wizard of, Wiz Wizard of Oz, the big wizard said, "Don't mind the little man in behind the curtain." That's what it's like. Um, the truth of the matter is, this is the way it is. The people have all the power. And power flows from us down through the hierarchy to the, to, to, to the bottom. So, let me look at this one. Um, what would happen if sometime, let's see, the summer's almost over. Let's say next summer, all the lawyers took the same week off for vacation. Yeah, so. What would happen if all the wage earners took the week off, same week off for vacation? The economy would crash. Who has the power? I mean, after all, we the working class, the middle class and the lower class, we make every product, we generate every single dollar of EFP, we, uh, of GNP, we fight the wars, we, we enforce the laws, we collect the taxes, taxes for the IRS, we do everything. We have the power. We are the power. Uh, who, who talked about general strike in Seattle? General strikes, really powerful. When everybody says, the whole, whole city, the whole state, the whole country says, we ain't doing it anymore. If we had a general strike in this country, do you think the power holders would say, hey, whatever you want? Of course they'd say whatever you want. So um, it's, it's this, this, uh, this, this question of, of the, sh the shape of the power. Who has the power? Um, and then some people some will say to me, okay, well, really, you know, it's like um, the power, it's, it's not us, it's, it's Congress, it's, it's the courts. I love to go to the 1986 Supreme Court decision. 1986 the Supreme Court ruled it is legal to have anti-homosexual anti laws. 2003 the Supreme Court ruled it is illegal to have anti-homosexual anti, anti laws. The Constitution didn't change between 1986 and 2003. The human biology didn't change between 1986 and 2003. The Bible didn't change. What happened? We had we had a nonviolent a nonviolent active active nonviolent campaign to change public opinion. Public opinion changed, in the Supreme Court miraculously looked at the Constitution, read it, and said it. It says the exact opposite. That's how it people. <clears throat> so important. Um, over here some laws too. Um, <coughs> So, and, and then there's this question of violence versus nonviolence. Um, and there are many examples of when movements went along great until they turned violent and then they stopped. The one I like to talk about is 1904 uh, in the Russian Revolution. 1904 Russian Revolution, the revolution was virtually won. Uh, the, pre the, pre the, the thinking was that two thirds of the Russian army was ready to defect. In fact, they had entire brigades of, that were loyal to the Tsar trying to block. Brigades that were ready to mutiny from, from join, joining the revolution. Um, and then um, Lenin, who believed very firmly in, in the violent revolution, he believed there had to be a violent revolution, um, had convinced one of the working communities to sort of uh, let him form a militia. He went to the, uh, at, at right at that moment, when if all they had to do was sit back and, and the revolution was won, he went out there and he started shooting the army. The army, of course, in self defense, closed ranks. By definition, when an army closes, closes ranks, they close around, around their government. So in fact, they close around the Tsar, so the, the revolution was lost, they had to leave the 1917 revolution. Um, so, but, but the things that are won by, all the things that are won through, through nonviolent activism campaigns is huge. 
and um 